Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Conversations with Coaches podcast. I'm your host, Kevin, and I am delighted to once again have one of my very favorite guests back on. J.D. Kindred, you might remember from earlier this year, we had a we've had a couple of just quite frankly energizing conversations. Like I, I often I often remark to uh to my to my friends and colleagues how typically like the podcast as much as I love it it's like you know it, it kind of draws a tiny bit from my emotional gas tank so to speak kind of as a sort of self-defined introvert and yet whenever I talk to you JD I find myself full or fuller than I was at the beginning which is a which is a rare delight for me and so I just I'm just so excited to have you back on let me int- reintroduce you to the audience for those who don't remember JD is a Canadian born author entrepreneur world traveler and intuition coach uh, JD's book, Intuitive Business Connections, is all about growing a business from zero to six figures in an intuitive way. She's passionate about helping other entrepreneurs and business professionals live more intuitively and authentically and have a balanced, joy-filled life. We have a lot to talk about because you have had an eventful year. So I would like to just open up the floor to you to talk about how things have developed and grown since we last spoke earlier in the year. Yes, thank you. Well, I first, I just absolutely, I'm so grateful to be here. I loved your intro. You know, I think that's my ultimate goal is for people to feel better and more full when they leave, you know, either speaking with me or my retreats. Like, so just hearing you say that really made me feel like, okay, I'm doing something right. Like, this is my ultimate goal. Like, so thank you for that. I just love that intro. And it's so fun to be able to have the opportunity to touch base with you every couple of months because I reflect back on what I've done in the last year. Sometimes I don't notice or acknowledge or see my growth. And then it's like, wait, I remember in January 2023, I had, you know, my one podcast with you. And I was like, this is my big dream. And I, this is, I hope I can do this one day in the future and open my home to retreats. And coming out of this season, you know, this is the fall now, and I started my retreats at end of June to the first week of October. I'm still having retreats. Uh, I just opened more dates for the new year. But now it's like, wow, I actually had a dream. I, I manifested it. And now I have crazy fun stories to share with you today. So yes, I had an amazing summer where I was able to host a wellness retreats. I called it the, the retreat I called I named because yeah, I had a few names, but one of the names was reconnect your intuition. Hmm. And what does that look like? It looks like coming to my home and having, you know, quite a structured day, even though everything was optional. It was like hmm. morning meditation. And, and, you know, the way I meditate is not the right path. There's many types of paths and meditation styles. So every day I would try and introduce a new meditation style. And then I had my one hour daily yoga, which I, you know, taught a little bit about the yogic lifestyle. I had a theme. I would create a sequence based on the theme. We would do, you know, a little meditation. Anyways, it was a breath work, pranayama. So a little one hour holistic yoga. Then I would offer coaching, one-to-one coaching to all of my guests. Uh, We would go eat really, I would make really nutritious, vegetarian, sometimes vegan meals. We would go hiking in the forest every day. We would do restorative yoga in the afternoons. Again, healthy meals. And in the evenings, we would do these like fun activities, even like board games. How often do adults come together and actually get to play just a fun board game or yeah. go dancing or uh, would go to the spa or go to like curtain, which is like a, you know, meditative chanting um, live concert. And so anyways, I just like chose my best day on earth and would create a whole retreat out of it. And people literally like flew around the world. I had a woman come in from Belgium, an entrepreneur from Belgium. I had people from the East and West Coast flying in from in Canada. I had people driving two days up from the United States. And it was just like, people really want this. And I didn't realize that. But again, I followed my intuition. It was like, go do this. This is the date. And I just don't question it. I just, I just don't question my intuition. I do as I'm told by my higher self. <laughs> and amazing and magical things unfold. So that was my summer. That's my update. That's that's beautiful. I love 
first first of all i'll start at the end i just love that like it takes a while for most of us to learn that 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 intuition that voice that that sort of higher self inside of you yeah it's 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 right it's right and that practice of following it it's so like you get those rewards and even if it's just like you know you 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 pick a different direction to go for your for a morning walk or you try a different meditation style that maybe you tried once a long time ago and you're like you know what i'm gonna try that today and just these these unexpected but reliable delights like it's it's almost i find myself uttering this phrase quite a bit delighted but not surprised because mm-hmm. after a while you really do you learn to trust in that quote unquote uncertainty you learn to trust that intuition because in that trust and in that experience there's you grow this beautiful certainty of direction and of purpose and of passion and then you because of course you're you you get to build that construct that best day I, I love the way that you the way that you think of that that's building your best day and then finding a way to share it with people and then watching them literally flock to you from all over the world <laughs> and respond to your best day in a way that helps them to have their best day. I mean, that's, if, if that's not what we're doing here, I don't know what is. That, that, that is. that is the stuff, capital T, capital S. <laughs> I know. And then at the beginning, I was like, how do I teach intuition? I write like, you know, chapter four, I think it's a chapter four. It's all about uh, intuition, how we receive intuition. And I got to refer my guests, like, oh, read the book, you know, read that. I, I don't need to teach that. But then I just would naturally share stories about my life because I have so many synchronicities that happened to me and by following my intuition that I just started share and they still surprise me. Like, it's still like, wow, that's crazy. And so I simply share fun stories about my day with my guests as almost a teaching opportunity of like, Hey, this is what happens. Like live, you just saw it. Like this person I ran into, uh, I met in a retreat center this many months ago and she happened to just be passing and like just the craziest stories I give them and they see it live. And so that's kind of how I've been teaching intuition at my retreats lately too, uh, which wasn't expected. I wasn't expecting to teach through, you know, my own fun experiential stories, but that's how it turned out. So, <laughs> yeah. And we, we don't always see the value of those stories. Like we understand that they're valuable to us, but we don't see how how powerfully they convert for others until you, until you see it happen. And you're like, Oh, it's not just cause yeah, I mean, there's all sorts of like normal human worries where it's like, you don't want to talk too much about yourself. You're there to help. You're there to serve and provide. And so you can, you feel like you might be centering yourself too much. Sometimes I know I, 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 I tried to concern myself without worrying about that. I know there's a, a distinction and a difference there, but then you realize how, how much power other people can derive from your stories and how much, of an encouragement how much of a of a maybe a necessary nudge that they need they hear something from you and they see a little bit of themselves in that story that you just had and they're like oh i could that i could do that or i could try that or that makes sense to me and you never know what story is going to unlock someone else's next step or next journey and it's just again it's one of those things where you don't necessarily think it's going to be all that important or valuable and maybe you even want to sh- you know shy away from centering yourself but offering yourself in that way through your stories is sometimes the most powerful way to be of service. Mm. Well, yeah, I love learning through other people's stories. Like I can (laughs) learn something a hard way or I can watch someone go through it and go, "Mm, I don't want that. Or going, (laughs) "Mm, I really want that. So I love learning that way. And um, so, yeah, maybe that's why I feel inspired to share to my, my stories, just even like, you know, people have a belief of one thing. Oh, I need to do it this, or I need to live like this, or I need to earn this much, or I need, it's like, well, that's your truth. And I hear that and that's valid. And this is my truth. And this is how I live. And people, it kind of shifts people in somehow like, oh, well, JD's living a very different way and she's very happy and she, you know, like she's doing something, something different than me, you know? Uh, so they do listen. And, and again, I don't naturally, I love to talk as you may sense, <laughs> but I don't, I like, I, I talk when people are curious. And so, hmm. you know, there's some groups that are very curious about me and I share a lot of fun stories and there's other groups who maybe are stuck in their story and they get caught up in their story and they're not as curious about me. And I don't, they don't, then they leave and they don't really know a lot about me. And I'm like, okay, that's fine. I'm not going to, you know, I tend to 
I tend to speak when people are curious about me. So, or when I feel people are curious about me, I, I, I sense that with you. That's why I just like can't stop talking <laughs> because I feel like you do, you do have interest in what I have to say, but that's not everyone. And nor do I push, you know, my beliefs on everyone, but uh, yeah, I think there is something very special about storytelling. And I like learning through stories and teaching through stories. Yeah, and I, I, I just I love how how adaptable you demonstrate yourself to be. Because that's an important part too. Is of, of 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 being an intuitive person is to read the situation, p- pick up what other people are putting down. They they're offering. You know, most people are not as guarded as they think they are, <laughs> and they're they're letting you know usually very early on, sometimes very loudly the kind of interaction they're looking to have, the kind of interaction they're capable of having in that particular moment. Now, things might change and shift. They often do as someone goes through an hour or a day or a whole retreat or you know a, a year, however it happens to shape up. And then just being willing to look at that and adapt accordingly. It's again, it's, I talked about this a little before I hit record, how simple most of this stuff is and yet how profoundly powerful and how beautifully delightfully unsurprisingly huge these changes can be that come out of these simple acts of intuition and kindness and adaptability and story sharing whether it's in the telling or the receiving it's again i keep i keep i keep i keep saying things that don't have a question attached to them because i'm just inspired by your sharing which again (laughs) i guess is demonstrating exactly what we're talking about (laughs) yeah i love that i i love that you that you notice the adaptability because my retreats are literally the exact same schedule, the exact same menu for everyone. And every every retreat and every like unique energy of participant that come together from different parts of the world, different cultures, different languages, like it can, it can never be the same. Mm-hmm. And some, so I really do have to adapt retreat to retreat for every person. Some people come for the interest of, you know, uh, yoga others come they just want to read and go to the spa others want to have the coaching every day and I literally like okay you can have it all some people like coach every day others they go to the spa every day like you can create your own reality here and I have everything in line but I really adapt day by day by the energy by the weather by like what mother nature by our by how our bodies are feeling like I really every day adjust the schedule to the energy of of nature and the group. And so, yeah, they, they're all different. And I'm so excited because this was not in my psyche before the summer, but then I realized, cause I just thought, oh, well, everyone wants, wants to be at a lakefront during the summer. And they went, wait, well, this, you know, the fall is stunning. The two, you know, the couple of weeks with the gorgeous fall colors in Quebec are the most beautiful time of the year. So I had a retreat for that. And then I was like, wait, the winter is like just as magical. Uh, I do the exact same schedule. So we go hike in the forest and we go to this Nordic spas and we, you know, I have a fireplace in my living room where we do yoga and um, uh, meditation. So in the mornings, I'm going to like have a nice fire. So it's going to maybe be like warm yoga and, and people can read and draw and play board games and all the things that we do. So I've now opened up uh, dates for the winter, which I'm so excited about. And my ultimate goal, I forgot to mention this before, my ultimate goal, the first intuitive hit I got when I was in Costa Rica was ideally I want to have these one month sanctuary retreats because sometimes people are looking for that. They're like, I can't heal and change all my habits in a week, which people you know, may not be able to. And so it's like, <laughs> Well, wait, you can come here for a month and really reprogram your habit patterns um, and your habits. And so now I've started opening that up as well. These one month sanctuary retreats at my home as well. So those are some fun things coming up for the future for 2024. (laughs) I got I got to share with you this analogy that popped into my head as you were talking about how you have these these very structured frameworks and yet every every retreat is different because of the people and the and the weather and all the variables that go into it and in my head I just I imagined you in a kitchen with like you've got the same pots and pans and utensils the ones you've used to cook thousands and thousands and thousands of meals and every meal is different the things that come out of that kitchen it could be a loaf of bread it could be a beautiful like you know you know, vegan salad, it could be 
this sort of you know roasted salmon with it, it, it could be like just about anything so many different permutations really it could be anything and it'll be something different every time that comes out of that same kitchen with the mm -hmm. same tools you know the same same oven with the same controls and the heat it's just like i i don't know that analogy popped in my head of you just uh, as the chef just yeah. <laughs> just you know seeing what ingredients are coming into your kitchen today and cooking up something wonderful as i have it in my <laughs> head now, now i can, I can hear the sizzle and I can also hear the crunch of boots in the snow as people are hiking through the forest yeah. in the winter. That's another, I love, I just, I love, love, love that you emphasize that because yeah, it's like, I'm thinking as the, as the fall turns to winter, it's like, there's still so much beauty in winter. It's like, well, yeah. why not invite people to come in and share that beauty and see, see what we can cook together. <laughs> mm -hmm. And change their habit pattern or their mindset about winter as well, because the experience is the same home, the same everything, yet the experience will be drastically a different energy in the winter. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I thought, yeah, if people want to come even two times a year, people are already booking for next year. But it's like, well, come in the winter, your experience will be completely different. So mm -hmm. I'm really feeling excited about that. Ah, oh, it's so cool. Well, shoot, I just, I'm, I'm, I gotta do the responsible host thing that just peaked up at the Zoom clock. And while I yeah. could, I could just selfishly keep you here for hours. <laughs> um, I do want to get you out of here. But before you go, I mean, tease whatever else might be coming up. I want to make sure that you tell the audience where they can find out more about winter retreats coming up and and this year, where they can find out about next year's retreats if they want to like. I am, I am imagining they're getting booked up relatively fast. So people might want to jump on that sooner rather than later if they want to reserve their slot. So yeah, before I let you go, where can people find out more about the retreats, find out more about what you've got coming up next as, as 2024 creeps up on us very rapidly. So yeah, tell the audience where they can find out more and anything else you're excited about coming up in the year. Thank you. Yes. Well, you know, the best way to contact me is through my website, www.intuitivebusinessconnections.com. There, there's a link that says retreats. You can click directly on uh, the one retreat that I'm hosting, which is Reconnect Your Intuition. It's a, it's a week long and the dates are at different dates. Um, but again, I'm throwing those dates out there. If a group comes to me and or, or a family or a group of friends and say, hey, we want this week, I will create a custom offer. Like there's, I, I will not say no to anyone. So um, even if it's for one person, if they're like, I need this, I will make it happen for, hmm. for them to show up and be here. Like, I feel like this is a house of healing. I'm not going to say no to anyone. Uh, so just feel free to reach out and ask, like, what specifically do you want? And I can create a retreat for that. Sometimes people are like, I want silence all week. Awesome. I can create a silent retreat. Like, no problem. Like, I can create whatever you want. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, don't hesitate to reach out for that. Uh, also on my website, people can reach out for one-to-one -one coaching online. And one of the fun projects that uh, I haven't really shared with that many people uh, is I'm in the process of creating with two beautiful humans that I like hand selected from around the world. These are two beautiful souls that I'm like, I want to be around with that. I want to be around these souls more often and work with them. And we all have a common goal and project of, of coaching more conscious change makers, leaders, um, entrepreneurs. And so we're creating this nonprofit right now. And, you know, in a couple months, you'll you'll see the name, <laughs> maybe in the show notes of this podcast. When it comes out, we'll have that finalized. We're just uh, discussing the details about that now, but really working with, um, yeah, people who want to up level their life, create a community, um, to really help transform themselves internally, so they can share their gifts to the world. Hmm. Yeah. Ah, what a tease. I love it. <laughs> That's all I'm going to give you for now. <laughs> no, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. And I, I just love it. You, you've, you, you started out at the beginning of the year with, with, a, with a big idea, with an inspiration from your intuition. And not only do we get to celebrate that and talk about how it's continuing to grow. We mm -hmm. also get that, that, that moment of what comes next. What's the new thing around the corner, the next development, the next pursuit of intuition, the next, the next passionate, passionate journey. I just, I, you know what? You more than almost anybody else I get a chance to talk to. You practice what you preach, and mm -hmm. I love it. I love and I love how willing and able you are to share that. I know we only have a brief time together today, but you are able to get right to the heart of the matter in a way that is both accessible and elegant, and expresses you very, very beautifully. But also, I feel like invites people to come in 
<laughs> which is just perfectly appropriate. So I know it's, I've probably said it a thousand times, but thank you so much for sharing a little bit of time today. And thank you for being you in the world, doing what you're doing. I think I just, I really do. I, I feel like you're, you're getting the validation that you're on the right track by just how much interest you're getting. But I really do feel like you are, you have moved into a very important purpose. And I just, I love seeing that. And I love just getting to share that with you. So thank you. <laughs> thank you. I feel so aligned uh, right now in my life. So thank you for, for seeing that. I feel so seen. Thank you, Kevin. It's always a pleasure. Uh, beautiful. And hey, to the audience, you know what to do next. I know it's, I know it's October, 2023 right now when we're recording, maybe early November when you're listening to this or whenever. It's not too soon to go to the website, which will be linked in the show notes. Find out more about the retreats, maybe, you know, sign up for notifications, follow JD wherever she might be on social media. I'm sure you can find her on LinkedIn and Instagram and wherever you might find people and pay attention. This is, this is good, good stuff. Capital G. So thank you for listening. Thank you for being with us today. And we'll talk to you again very soon.